Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. Uh, it's Creativity Inc. and uh, my name is Diana and welcome back uh, if you've been here before and welcome if you're new. Uh, today, um, the project we're going to start making our molds. We're going to make crystals and I'm, to make my molds I'm going to use potatoes. So I'm going to cut these like wedge potatoes like but then I'm going to here I'm going to shape the crystals and I'm really going to go based on what I remember. Um, thinking back I, I you know you could look back you can I mean, look at the um, Pinterest I think you, they'll see them but the shape of them is like a potato but then the the corners you cut off the corner so you have sort of like a octagon but not really it's kind of like misshapen stick sort of like that's what I'm thinking that's that in my head that's kind of what I'm figuring it's kind of like a mis, misshapen uh, potato and so, and what I do though is I do make it pointy and I do make it like different sizes of, of length as well. You have some short ones and you have some fat ones and thin ones. And so here basically what I'm doing is I'm shaping the potato um, to different angles of the potato um, so that it, you know, you gotta think of them as, as, a, as how a crystal would look like. Next thing to do, or next thing I'm doing, um, and you could do this before, I'm making a box to where you're gonna put, uh, pour in your um, your solution to make the mold. Now I'm gonna take advantage, full advantage of the box all the way around. So at the top, um, the I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put the potatoes on the top on the top, and you'll see it right now in a bit. On the side, on one side, I want to put uh, different types of screws. So whenever I have a little bit of leftover uh, material, I could always use the side, uh, this side of any mold. So I'll have different, I have already different molds. And my goal is to always have something to have, you know, if I have a little bit left over, I'm going to pour it on this mold, um, regardless of what mold I'm working on. So just you know just and also I wanted to take advantage of the sides also I don't want to waste as much material to make the mold because it is a little expensive so and then at the bottom I'm gonna make mushrooms so the mushrooms um, I'm gonna make them separately so just so that I can play Mitch Mitch match Mitch match whatever the tops and the sticks so I can have short big fat tops or short and little tops so and by tops I mean like the umbrella top and by by uh, bottoms I mean that long stick that holds the umbrella top of the mushrooms sorry I should have looked it up and be more like you know smart about it or uh, technical about this but I'm speaking more in layman's terms so everybody understands what I'm saying so I'm gonna make different sizes and I'm going to use a paper clay this is just me using regular paper clay and what I'm doing it's still wet and it's still fresh but since I'm gonna more pour the mold today you should be fine uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of silicone on the rim just so that the pour medium doesn't go under the the material on the I mean of the umbrella not that not because uh it's actually gonna glue or anything i actually pre-taped the whole box with a non-stick tape cover just so that it um the the molding is easy to release the mold so what i'm doing here is i'm sticking my my potato wedges to um what i call needle needles so that it has that um so it holds from the top because if i use glue like i said this this potato being wet and that this uh, other tape like being like a slick surface i know it's not gonna like hold up and because this top eventually is gonna be uh inverted onto the other box like a lid i don't want it to like slip off during the molding you know problems as already I, I, as it is already i'm like thinking all of all these other problems that I think I'm gonna have now I I don't know if you'll be able to see here or um, in my other uh, uh, bef I mean before you saw but in the box if you look at it now you can see I made some top I mean some bottoms the long stick bottoms 
I'm thinking when I'm putting these, the I'm laying my potato wedges on the top. I'm focusing that that on the parts where I have the sticks, the top or the potato crystals are on the smaller side on that corner, or there is none because I don't want the mold to be touching. I don't want these parts to be eventually be touching one another. So I'm eyeballing where I'm gonna put the lid and at the same time where each part it is so it's, it, it doesn't connect. I do wanna take advantage of the, the mold material as much as possible, but at the same time, I don't want any problems where I pour my mediums through or, um, or just cut, you know, like break. I don't want to like drop like the long stick and you know me hitting it with the other stick as I'm pouring as I'm pouring it breaks off because I'm gonna pour then I'm going to put the lid with the potatoes on there and I, I know that potentially may cause me problems so I want to make sure to avoid those kind of problems um, after I put the the potatoes and the on with pins I'm going back to the uh, clay um, paper clay and you I'm putting base on it because what I did notice on the crystals the crystal see how I'm gonna invert it down so I'm just here checking that nothing touches um, so I did on the potato bases that's the that's see that's the inside and then anyway so on the potato bases I put a bunch of uh, paper clay just so that it uh, it um, it gives me a base a crystal base anyways on there, you can also see that I made a tree slice on one of the sides, just so I could have a, a, a medium where I could pour if I wanted to make a resin tree slice, you know, for a book cover or whatever. But um, that's one of them. And then on the other opposite ends on the box, I'm still talking about the box. On the box, um, I put leftover um, silicone that I didn't want from before. And... Um, Usually you should be fine. I just want to save some space and I was also marking where I want the top To hit you know to rest on anyways um, I'm using this Hobby Lobby resin. I mean um, Rubber mold do not recommend it. I was I ran out of the one I usually have which is like the blue and yellow bottle and I'll post it down below because that's the one you should use I went to Michael's, Hobby Lobby, and other craft stores, and nobody has it anymore. Um, but if I find it, you guys can have it on the bottom. It's only like three more, like three, like less than five dollars difference than this one that I'm using. The one that I recommend has more of it, so it's worth better. Plus, it's a way better material, and you will see later why I'm complaining left and right about this product. Do not, do not use it. Do not, do not recommend it. Not at all. So, but. Uh, here at this point obviously I don't know and I'm gonna go spend a lot of money <laughs> on a lot of mold because I ended up buying two packets and each packet is like 30 bucks so you know and for me not to be happy or or anything and you guys will see the problems later but anyway so when I have my book cover ready and I'm going to um, reinforce my spine so I just grabbed the blank em uh, empty canvas and I'm just gonna glue it on the spine um, just because the project you know the spine project that I have later needs that reinforcement I just want it to be uh, sturdy and stiff um, and so this helps me a lot okay next step I'm tr I want to get a basic um, I grab this piece of paper and I just grab a basic um, area not sp or a piece that covers that area I want to cover in the book and this is how I make my pattern of how I want to cut my frame that's gonna frame my my uh, mushroom and crystal cover so I m what I'm doing here is I put the you guys grab that I grab the piece of paper that kind of covers the, ba the area I want to make my frame in then I fold it in four pieces, okay, and this is why. In each square, I make a design that I kind of have in mind, but because it has curves and it has a different, an, an aesthetic I want to go for, 
I design, I make it in four kind of different styles. And what I'm doing here is in each square, I make it a little different or I emphasize more or I take away more like curves. And what I'm gonna do eventually at the end is grab the one that I like the more, the most, and work on it a little bit. And then eventually use that and cut the rest of them out. That way it gives me options. It allows me to visualize and see other curves. And it also allows me to, to cut out and not be able to, I mean, I don't have to do the work of like, you know, cutting, I mean, copying this shape onto the other, the other sides or anything like that, because it's going to be all symmetrical. It saves me tons and tons of space and headaches and uh, time. So, and that's kind of what I was going for. So once I have it all done, I just go ahead and cut all four at the same time and saves me headaches. So shortcut to a pattern making process in my head. I've never seen, I, I don't I don't know if it's done before or it's, it's already a common practice, but if it's not, this is how things work in my head. And so um, once I'm done with my pattern, I will center my piece and actually it's not really centered it's a little bit more towards the top than on the than towards than centered i do want it 100 percent center i don't i feel like if you center things and like in the cover i feel like i don't know well this one wasn't centered i felt like i want i felt like i was craving for this to be a little bit more on top than on the bottom i don't know why but it's just a, a slide off it's like maybe one centimeter off probably not even visible in the camera but it's just a little bit off. My main concern was the center from, from side left to right or side to side. What I do here, since I know I'm gonna cut this little piece off, I'm just gonna pin it down, uh, trace it, and then cut it up. Simple as that. Okay, next step. I know it's gonna be a bunch of steps, you'll see. My next step is to grab um, that paper clay and do that mixture. I've done it in other videos, but I'm gonna just review it here. I grab PVA glue and just mix it into here. Now this this air air um, air dry clay. Um, if you don't do this, will one crack off if I use paint, and two this makes it more durable. It's like it makes it I don't know like ten times harder. And I really like working with it. Um, it's easier and plus I don't have to bake it. I love playing with clay. Um, I've made my own dishes and stuff like that. I love love clay. Um, that's how my first my first passion is sculpting. In case you guys were wondering, um, but yeah, so I make a um, a long snake sort of. I'm going here with the not the straightest, but the, I'm trying to be more uh, the same um, width. I want to make a worm that's kind of around the same width. See how it's cracking already because I'm playing with it and it wants to already dry. So here, please, please, please make sure you use a crash, cross hatch because um, you have usually, most likely, you have a smooth surface and you want the clay to, to adhere to something, right? And so I'm going to use the same PVA glue. Now use the stronger clay. You guys know I always use Elmer. But Elmer is not as hard as this PVA glue that you you get for the binding, and I totally recommend you using it. I'm going to link it down below in case you can't, you don't have access to it. This is the one that I recommend when I'm mixing the clay paper with um, with the glue. This is the glue I recommend because um, it, like I said, I've used it, uh, different kinds of glues. I've used Elmer's glue. I used more of a wooden glue and it still it still cracks off this is the one glue that i found that doesn't crack when i paint on top of it it cracks here uh, as you guys can see here it's cracking because uh, like i said the clay wants to already dry because it's air drying clay, clay and, it, and i'm pl still playing with it so it's cracking because of that not because of the glue but as you guys will see right now i can smooth that out before it dries completely and it should you should be fine um, the whole point is you don't want it to crack once it's already dry as it dries because you can't fix it unless you put more and then you'll have to sand it and yada yada just to make it even so you don't want to do that you don't want it to crack as it's drying you want it to crack here now before it dries so that you have time to uh, fix the cracks with paint or with glue or 
um, you can go actually you can even go back with water with this clay and um, smooth out the cracks and smooth out um, anything that you would um, need it to to um, do not be so not not be cracked this is a water-based um, clay so using a water you're perfectly fine then I go back with my uh, it's like a little carving tool but I go back and I smooth the insides and make sure that everything uh, is touching on the bottom make sure that um, this is where you shape it you know you want it to be um, pointy on the points and curve on the curve so yeah, I go back and I clean it off and this is the time where I make sure that it's flat where I, where the frame goes in because my goal is to make a frame out of this so it's sort of like a um, not relief but it's like a frame so um, I'm just going back making sure that it kind of is clean and it's frame like and see this is what I do to smooth it out in this part because it was more dry I'm just using glue and I'm going back and forth you smooth it up and it works fine it, it won't crack again and um, it helps it, it helps now if you like the crack I the crack um, look because if you're going with the vintage look sometimes you do want those cracks so hey you know now you know that if you you want to put it on there and you take a little bit longer to you let it maybe sit for like a minute or two before you put it on and you enjoy those cracks good because you know you can play with that you can paint it uh, what color you want and then go back with black and accentuate those cracks which you know it'd be cool and um but you gotta consider that you know when you have a crack sometimes they run so my goal was for me not to have cracks that run so um here i am post i'm putting my background now grab a little bit of a package yeah it's a package cardboard so i don't know where you would have it i just grabbed it from the back of a package and i'm using it because i want something sturdy to glue all my elements onto for the mushrooms and the crystals so make sure it's something hard and sturdy to attach to your background okay my next step is to paint it uh, my first coat is black but and this time I'm using black uh, the heavy gesso because you guys see me before I use the black with the uh, with the glue I use like for example any acrylic paint and then I use a little bit of gesso and a little bit of glue and it makes this paste right well it would work fine but this is the thing I've noticed um, that this particular uh, heavy medium gel is it works a little bit better than that um, and I use it only when I when I want when it's structural like in this case you know it's not for texture and it's not for for um, to cover something or to paint something opaque or mat in this case I want my I want it to reinforce my frame so because I want to do that I'm using this um, paste I'll link it down below in case you don't know it but this one really does help with the structure of the frame and I found that it's important to do that because in my past frames I will if you bang it hard it will probably break and I don't want it to happen so I have found out that this way this particular way is way better than just using acrylic paint with glue and gesso anyways I'm demolding and this will be where you see other factors now remember I said that this is not the mold to use look it's disgusting it didn't it didn't dry right on this particular one it dried and actually in other ones but in this one it, it didn't cure and I was very um, disappointed because it, if you go back and see other videos where I make other molds the other brand that I use the non Hobby Lobby brand it it doesn't bother it doesn't matter to it if I'm using wet clay or not it doesn't matter because in reality a lot of people use this way of making a clay and just making your mold you don't have to wait till it dries to make a mold but you know because I I don't know if it's because it's cheaper in quality less quality um, and it's cheaper in price as well as about five bucks cheaper it it it's just I was very unhappy it's very hard to demold 
I, um, I totally suggest if you're gonna make a mold go back and use the the brand that I'm linking down below because it's like I said it's not even that much more it's like three dollars more you get more though so I think at the end of the day it's a little bit cheaper because you do get more product these bottles were way smaller than the ones I usually make and I'm only I only used it because it was smaller but see this is the kind of putty I was telling you I make I make a putty where I use my acrylic paint with um, gesso and glue and it does make make things harder and um, more um, sturdy like my backgrounds and stuff like that but not when it comes to structural anyways I made a bunch of my inserts I painted all I hand painted all these mushrooms and um, for my inside now uh, I made them on um, what is it called this uh, folder file folder and I made these are gonna go um, make me like a folder and these are all be my signatures anyways I wanted to take the opportunity to announce that I will be starting um, patreon and that's because um, I would like to start making more um, more I don't know different content like this one and it, it, it does get pricey and does get um, what is it called expensive so I wanted to to maybe see if there's a way um, where I get a little bit of help and support from you guys my viewers and be able to bring uh, more content like this without like really um, hitting the pocket so I wanted to start you know a patreon subscription and for for that I will be putting uh, printables like in this case um, this um, I'm gonna scan and take a picture of all these uh, fungus and crystals that I drew here and I'm gonna make them downloadable only for my patrons um, so I will be uh, um, starting that at the beginning of November and this is just to announce it and to show you guys how this printables that I'm going to put on my patron uh, can be used now the cover is a little bit more harder and I guess it will be pricier but there's other things how other things you can do it as well I may be uh, giving away some of these like mushrooms and crystals that I make from these uh, materials for uh, for some people but most of most of most of the most of what I'm announcing is uh, the subscription and printables and also whatever templates I used will also be for downloadable for my patrons. Um, this is another ephemera that I'm making for the same book. This this is why this video is a little longer because I go through everything that I made in this book. I'm, I'm talking about like the book and the cover and every little thing that I use for, uh, for this book. And so this that I'm making here is an ephemera little glass jar or um, what are they called? Like little those little glass terrariums. Yeah, I think they're like called terrariums. But I'm gonna make a long one and a fat one, a long skinny and short fat one. So um, I'm making them out of this, so it looks like it's a crystal thing. But I don't know if it's, it might be a little hard because um, I'm using acetate and I'm drawing with um, with my regular marker. You guys can see here on the side of the screen uh, here that. I'm using a Pinterest um, is a little sculpture or something to as reference for my mushroom crystals are drawn pretty much all the same because what I'm doing I did here um, like I said they're pretty much all the same but I'm just making them different shapes and colors so um, just sticks and stone <laughs> I don't know how to describe how to draw uh, a crystal but um, what I do need is reference as how mushrooms look because I'm not a mushroom expert. I did see that documentary late, lately about magic mushrooms on Netflix, which inspired me to do this um, journal. I really love how nature provides us with all these magical cures. And um, I don't know, it just inspired me because I didn't know how much mushrooms can help a human body. So. Um, I'm making um, um, make, making sure that I have 
all my little flowers and everything I'm drawing with my marker now this is water marker water based marker so I know it's gonna kind of come off but most of it I'm gonna paint it with acrylic paints um, here is me playing this is a mistake not a mistake but a hmm, it's something I'm not gonna maybe repeat until like I get it down right okay because I'll I wanted to make these crystals but at the end I really wanted a color on them right like a blue or a green so I mixed in one some of my glue and I've done this technique where I paint paint my glue and use it like in, um, in one of my earliest videos I put this kind of technique and I used it with glue and um, it made some water it made a, one of those boats that flow in water in a jar or in a bottle for one of my like nautical themed traveler book but anyways um i'm i wanted to kind of make it 3d ish kind of style but because i use this marker that is not uh i mean that is not is not water it's water based so it was running and two i could it could have looked just as good without doing this whole drama of doing this and i don't know I don't know if I'll do this again, but learn from a mistake. I'm gonna work with this. I'm gonna love it because I'm already on it. <laughs> I'm already doing it. But this is where I stopped. I don't. I was my whole pro, my whole my vision was to do all these like little sculptural little mini things with this glue, but I ended up not loving it. So I'm just gonna use acrylic paint to paint the rest of it. And here, what I'm doing is I'm going back with the sharpie. It's a little thicker, and I didn't like that. I didn't have a thinner sharpie. And I don't know if they make like smaller tip sharpies in this. And I should look. I should look to see if they have a one that doesn't run but works on acetate. So that's kind of hard to to figure it out because I know there's like um, not not water based um, markers, but I want it to stick to um, acetate. So it's kind of like I don't know which one. If I find something, I'll link it down below. But this sharpie is a little thicker for my taste. And so, but I continue because I feel like it's it's a big piece, so it's gonna be all right. Now, um, I go back with my acrylic paint and I just paint um, all of it. I use different tones. Now, remember that this is paint your lighter, then your darker colors because the your front is under. This layer so if I was if you wanted to paint something lighter made it make it first then paint over it with a darker tone so that's kind of where um, kind of tricks you because you have to paint completely opposite you have to paint your lights first and then your your lights or dark so whatever um, accent you want on that piece on that layer you want to paint that first because you're drawing backwards on on this just just believe me on this one you're drawing backwards that's what i'm going for <laughs> um i made this mushroom more brownish than all the other colors i use some pink some blue some greens but see how you um i oh you had not seen it before but here what i'm doing is i'm going back and forth so i can see my layer um being in the right sequence and so um but see i couldn't work back and forth here on that glue segment and that's why i didn't like because i couldn't do uh i didn't think about doing the back the the colored ones so i i got stuck on just one not you know one base of white and that's why i didn't like working with the glue but if i do want to commit to it later what i'm going to do is go back with different colors of glue but now i have to wait until it dries or whatever and I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna do it but if I'm committed one of these days I might anyway so I'm gonna use a little little bit of a um, chipboard uh, as like kind of the like base of the dome or is it dome yes it's dome my glass dome or my glass terrarium you know what I mean so I'm painting it black first then I go back with my gold and now I want to give you a tip here real quick if you're gonna use gold use the same gold throughout the book so because I use this gold in my cover you'll see me using this golden throughout the book 
or similar gold. You don't want to change different colored gold. Anyways, so here's after I pour in my um, my silicone and my uh, what is it called? Uh, my molds. I am going to um, demold them. This is me demolding them, and this is why I didn't like this mold. It just I don't know. I didn't like this mold at all because it sticks to my paint, my my um, silicone. You're not my epoxy. You're not. It's not supposed to stick to it, and it comes out. You see how it's reddish? Come on! Like I was just so frustrated because now it's gonna look. It's gonna have a reddish tone. I went back with my little pin and I tried to pick all the little things that came out. But at the end of the day, it was just giving me that red tone, and I ugh, hated it so much. Please don't use this to make a mold, unless I mean. It also did it on the white. If you guys can see there on the top right hand side, you guys can also see that it did it on my white um, epoxy. And ugh, no, I didn't like it. Don't use this product, people. Um, use the other one. It, you know, Amazon has it where it comes in three days and stuff. So just plan ahead. I didn't have time to plan because I was, you know, um, this video took me about maybe close to ten days to make or maybe two weeks. I try to work a week in advance or two weeks in advance um, and I have a schedule of all the videos that I'm gonna make sometimes because of work it doesn't allow me to so I'm not able to make the videos and I don't have a video on that weekend but for the most part I try to plan my videos and work towards what I have in the goal you know so I have a list of you know I have like two three months in advance with all my videos but anyways I mean plan not made you know I'm not that that uh what is it called that scheduled organized but this is me gluing them i you now use crazy glue remember crazy glue um uh, um it's better for this one than my silicone just because i want it to dry faster and you want it to start for and because i'm going to do that one tip i showed you guys about building making a body with crazy glue and um baking soda it creates a body a hard strong body sort of if I was using like like a paste so it makes this like heavy duty paste so I have my layout pretty much basically I you take a picture like if you like something you'll take a picture of it and then add on to it or move it a little bit but you always have that reference of going back to the one you liked before and kind of how it looked because I've made it where I take hours to make a layout or a design and then I move it around and change it and then I forget what it was and then uh, you know, you'll, you'll see me spending like 30 more time, hours looking, going back to that. Now, see what I did here on the on that crystal that I have there? I cut the back off, but then I put it back in the front to make a body for like another additional base on the bottom of that one. And I go back and do that quite often. So save all your little pieces that you cut off so it makes flat on, on the bottom because it made it like a, it makes this like base of um what is it called um of crystals which is little pieces you know so i really enjoyed how i did that and here i am making that that thing that i'm telling you that thick base of um uh what's it called crazy glue and um baking soda um it won't come it won't break off that easy i promise you it's like it becomes like this really hard rock glue thing that um I'm so glad that I came across it. I watch like other channels where they're like to create stuff for like costumes and I learned that in this in that video and um, and I brought it onto the, my books, my journals, my my junk journaling world and I'm I've used this ever since I learned it. Learned about a year ago and if I remember which video it was I learned it from, I'll, I'll link it down below. But I don't even remember uh, which artist. Anyway, so if I link, if I remember, I'll link it down below. But the, I, I'm using this technique all the way around. Uh, I'm going with the strongest and stiffest uh, ways of uh, gluing things below because it's your cover. So if you want plan on using and playing with it, you want to make sure that it won't break off. And that's why I did the mold out of this, um, out of these materials. 
uh, instead of making it out of air, air paper, air drying clay. And um, I am blessed to have kids that bring me stuff all the time. And my son brought me these like little air, acorns. And I'm going to use some of them here. My daughter um, brought me a tray from her school. Like, you know, those trays that they serve their lunch with. She brought it home from school to give me. And, like, I came home and I saw these, like, it was all messed up because she carried all around her lunch break and in her backpack. And when I got into my desk and I was like, what the heck? What is this piece of trash, right? And then I threw it in the trash. Then my daughter, my five-year-old, walks in and sees it on the trash. And then she's like, Mom! I brought you this from school from my lunch break for your crafts. I felt like the world's meanest mom in the world because uh, I can't believe I just did that. She told me she carried her on her lunch break. Anyways, sorry I had to tell people because uh, I was feeling guilty about it. But I will use some I will use it and I will make something magical with it because it was given me with so much love. Anyways, I'm using moss and um, little pieces, and I mix different moss. I use the 99 cents moss, the nice moss, the non like different brands, different colors, different textures, because I feel that looks more natural than I was to stick with one kind, one color, or uh, of moss because I want it to be more as natural as possible. Now I, I did put I don't know if you noticed I did put a little bit of texture. On the bottom and I painted it green and brown and stuff like that because I didn't want my background to be completely flat black so but then I also added layer of the moss you know you can't really see the bottom but it's all about the layers and the textures that are combined that give you that one visual look and so I also painted the mushrooms I painted the base and I painted the top now I went with black I mean red because no matter how much I was covering it with white, it was still the red was still kind of showing through. So I just decided to do red. In my opinion, I wanted it to do like I don't know, blue or something. I'm not a red person, but at the end of the day, mushrooms most likely are red, and they kind of do go with it. Anyways, I'm using letter soup to put uh, my title, and I once you figure out your quote. I glued it with uh, crazy glue. It's the best to do the soup. Plus, it it, uh, it kind of encapsulates the soup. I mean, the yeah, the letter soup in the in the in it, so it doesn't rot or bring any like unwanted friendlies amongst your bugs. <laughs> and um, and I mean bugs, in case you didn't mean. I'm like my ten year old, like you know, uh, explaining all his jokes. Anyways, um. I go back paint it with black and then I go back with my gold and kind of bring in the the top of it now it's gonna look weird but that's kind of like like because the, the little letters are kind of like chip sometimes and stuff but I really love this look it brings it out I it's not a sticker I don't I felt like I didn't want to put a sticker label on there so and I didn't have stamp. I don't know. I just feel like this was the best way to go. Put a little bit of stars or like little sprinkles of gold with my pin. And I just kind of randomly put it there. Now this is the casting. And this is how I casted the resin molds. I mean the resins mushrooms. Now um, if you guys ever worked with resin. They're so easy to do. So so easy. You pour in half, same amount of A, same amount of B bottle. It comes into bottles, and you mix it. You mix it, and, and you'll see it change of colors right in front of you. So you'll see it be fuzzy, not fuzz fuzzy, but like blurryish. And then as 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 when it's ready to be poured, you'll see it be clear. Now, the cool thing about this one is you'll see it right in front of your eyes drying. It dries and I think three minutes it said and then like seven minutes to demold so in like seven minutes I have my things that I want to work with you guys see it here like I'm still pour, trying to pour in my my last like, leftovers from the little bottle and I, I what I did is because it was hard enough I felt like I could just smear it on the side and use my my screw tops and I did get a few of them out 
I want to work on a project where I have clear screw tops. Wouldn't that be cool? And uh, I'll probably use it on my next project because I have another project already in mind. But, you know, it does get to be a little bit more expensive. So that's why um, I would be so blessed and, and um, if you could, you guys could support me on a Patreon and, um, you know, in a trade kind of thing, I will put all the things that I draw up or patterns and even extra videos sometimes just for my patrons to use for um, for different journals. I feel like um, we, we can support each other and you know I could really use some help because it is gonna get expensive on, on this journey. If you, you guys already know it takes like $60 to make a happy birthday card, right? <laughs> And you know just to think of all the materials you got to buy to eventually make just one card but um, You know all these materials do take me that take me a while um, You know and, and sometimes and this one you guys didn't see but you guys will see because Eventually if I want to reuse these molds, I, I don't know if we'll be able to how, how often or how much because this material doesn't work. So eventually I may have to redo this whole mold again. And here goes another hundred dollars just on more material. So yeah. So if you guys can bless me, uh, that would be really, really awesome. I will have everything more uh, details as the month goes on because um, my Patreon page will be up the beginning of November. And I'll tell you, be more specific on the date as we get closer to the end of the month. But anyways, here I go. I casted some more mushrooms. Um, now, you guys know I'm big on spine art because I feel that's the most visual part of your book. Uh, I feel like, you know, I started noticing that I was putting all this effort in my front of my books. And at the end of the day, you're like, can't see it because it's like, you know, enclosed with the other books. So I feel like the spine should get more attention because that's what you see the most and so that's why I put so much effort on my spines you guys see that I do have some spine art which that spine art that I used before uh, the original is in this book okay, I will stick it in here you guys will see it later on the flip through but um, that will also be able I mean downloadable for you guys uh, with this pack it um everything that you guys see that i drew here or painted here uh and patterns will be down available for download on uh, for the patrons um and also if you have any questions let me know down below uh, if there's anything that i can help you on the casting or on the molding uh and i'll do my best to answer any questions you guys have uh, but here what i'm doing is um i put some crystals on the bottom and some mushrooms on the top and it's kind of basic but in reality at the end of the day the hardest thing was to glue it together um, but okay I, it wasn't too clear but underneath all of that underneath or in between I put some magnets there um, that you got I don't know why it didn't show that well but I put some magnets I think it's because I'm speeding up the, the video so fast I, I put some magnets on that and I put some magnets on the inside as well now if I would have been more planned out I would have put the magnets before I reinforced the spine but you know I'm working on it like 30 minutes at a time <laughs> on this thing so sometimes it's just hard for me to like see the future and really put in perspective what do I need I have a basic idea, but a real if you know if you're a maker, at the end of the day, you're kind of winging it. You have an idea, but it's not real clear, right? Anyways, my binding for today is going to be the same one, pretty much that I used for my uh, scrapbook slash art book slash junk journal slash all-in-one book. I'm using my the soda can tabs. I painted them gold now this gold is not the same acrylic gold this gold is oil based gold that I buy from um, they're used mostly used in like furniture I think and jewelry 
and uh, like cars like to do the model making not really for this kind of craft but I use it because it doesn't come off and it really it stays on the uh, 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 aluminum as I need it and it doesn't wear off it doesn't come off so much as a uh, regular acrylic or even a spray uh, bottle paint, paint wood those still come off you would have to like prime your pieces and all this and all that and it would still scrape off anyways what I'm doing here because I don't want to cut into my spine what I don't have I don't yeah I already have something already uh, cut into my I mean planned for my spine so what I'm doing here is I'm attaching it to the back um, and the way I'm doing this is I found these little what are they called like hammer head looking thing and it has like um, or like you know the bedazzles they're kind of like that it have it has like a little like a little like spikes that you kind of like stab into the book but I'm using my little tiny hammer my walker I think they're called because they're little hammers but they walk rather than like hammer kind of and I'm hammering those in now I didn't remember on the bottom but I still want to put some glue on there just to reinforce everything so I can be comfortable using it and not falling off. You know what I mean? So I'm gluing the, the strips of, oh, and these are strips of pants that my son wanted me to cut to shorts. Uh, and they're kind of like that corduroy blue. They're corduroy pants and I really like the, that color and the texture. And so I kept the, the little remnants and I, you guys seen me use it uh, to reinforce the spine before, and now I cut strips so I can use the tie to tie this off uh, for my um, signatures to tie off my signatures off here. And you guys can see on the on the left side, I grabbed scrapbook paper and I used it to cover my front and my back cover. Now because I've been working on it on a certain way when I dry my uh, spine reinforcer. It kind of wants to like go one way, so just make sure you just reshape your book. It happens to me all the time because I don't notice it, but um, here you go. There's attached, and here's for the flip through. And we're done. Two weeks of hard work, labor. Just kidding. I, it's, I loved it. I love, 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 loved how it came out. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what it would have done different. Um, maybe I would have planned my magnets before better but I loved see what I did there I used a little bit of blue just to kind of like made it worn out so it's not like completely flat I wanted it to be more like a little bit worn out I made this little pocket because I had a uh, mushroom stickers and um, I used it so I made it there so I can have like little the mushroom stickers um, for my ephemera I also grabbed a uh, leftover uh, folders and stuff like that and I drew extra mushrooms and extra uh, crystals for for just to tuck here and there I used gold I don't know if you guys see it on on my drawings so that it um, kind of goes along the whole thing so um, that's the original artwork that I used on the spine art uh, from before and I that will also be a, a um, available for download from my patrons these are just regular paper I for for those of you that I've seen before I double dip my lay my my papers but I wrinkle them so I'm, I'll make a ball of paper a water paper and then I throw it in the, in the coffee water and the trick is to let it dry in a ball do not try to make open it and strain it because then you'll get ripped paper left and right just leave it um made up in a ball and then it will dry as it goes and this is some of i played with how i put my soda can tabs on the back i put a little piece of cardboard then i use that little blue strip and then i also use uh, li little rivets that's how my um my little glass jars came out and i was so happy how it came out um i you'll see that one i use the black outline but I wasn't too happy with all that black outline. And on the other one that you guys will see right now, I didn't, um, what's my call it? I didn't um, use 
black outline and it came out all right as well but I'm going to be looking for a like a sharpie kind of like permanent style marker for acetate because I want to do this again if you guys can't see it really clear there but those are also like little terrarium kind of dome jars uh, for for uh, mushrooms and crystals and oh here I'm sorry I forgot to mention but that's I mean I'm sure you guys could see that's the same um, pattern I just traced it on my folder and I drew the mushrooms inside but that's the same pattern that's on the cover and I just used that pattern all over so it's kind of like um, what's in my color it's kind of the same everywhere so this is how the other one came out this one doesn't have a black outline and I like it as well just as much I liked it anyways I pulled it here and it wasn't like I guess completely dry yet I what I did use is uh, that silicone that I glue that I use all the time on the ball on the bottom so um, it didn't show that good and I, I guess I missed recording that part but once you're done with the bottom acetate you put another acetate on the back and so that way it looks like there's you know uh, glass all around it well to me at least <laughs> and um, on the tops on the little balls I put um, acrylic there and on the bottoms when I'm uh, gluing the little base and there's my labels maker signature and year as you guys know um, it was such a blast um, doing this for you guys I hope you guys enjoyed it I did make that um, I don't know if I mentioned it before but I made that that spine art removable just because it was so bulky I wanted to have the ability to play with it as um oh see I didn't put it right the first time you gotta make sure it clicks right there you go no it's not clicking there you go there you go you see how it clicked now I won't move okay so anyways I wanted to have the ability to uh, remove it and work with work on it as after well thank you guys so much so much for watching I really do read all your comments and I appreciate all your thumbs up and um, if you guys could if you guys like this video please consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up you guys know I want to be rich and famous till next time bye love you